Rocker Pat here. Hi right, guys, it's another hot rocking day in the jungle. Man, it's a little chilly today. We're gonna get nice and cold tonight. Gonna be another day like this tomorrow, but then we got a cold front coming for some rain. Well, let's see what I've got done in the last week. Uh, let's see. Some of you may have watched the video on my little hammer stand. And let me show you all the things that I've made with this thing so far. Uh, this right here, the two strips of quarter inch by two inch or whatever the hell they are, three inch, whatever, uh, strip is there for a very specific reason. And I'll show you that in a second, but let's see. Uh, the last we talked about the little lady car, I had gone over and I picked up these uh, torque boxes and I realized that they're not gonna work. These are for a Mustang and we're working on a uh, Falcon. But you know, we all thought that maybe they might work so it was worth giving it a try. But I did not, uh, I did not get, well, bottom line is they didn't work. So that left me with having to take care of it my damn self. And what I went and done, went and did was because those are 14 gauge steel. I went and bought a four by eight sheet of 14 gauge. And that's some thick steel, man. I mean, it ain't no... It ain't, it ain't, it ain't no thin stuff. And I'm happy to say that my Harbor Freight shears, electric shears, will cut the fucking 14 gauge. I couldn't believe it. Uh, but I did break a set of shears and had to go out and buy another set. Fortunately, they're only like 20 bucks for another set. And I didn't have to buy the whole machine. Uh, but yeah, it will cut the 14 gauge. Uh, just take it easy at it and you'll make all the little curly cues and all but let's go take a look and see what i've done because the hammer stand and by the way we're gonna name that bobby for bobby brown because it's hammer time dun, 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 hammer time so yeah if you're gonna go over there we may as well call it bobby brown so i took bobby brown and well the first thing I did is in the last video we talked about this car, I showed you the couple pieces of steel and that round bar that I was going to use to make some of these torque boxes. And this is what I came up with on the outside of this side. So if we look in here real closely, you can see a new piece of 14 gauge bent down and around and all the way up underneath the car if we can see it. Let me see if we can get over here and see that. So yeah, I got the torque box going on there. Nothing's welded yet at this point, but you can see a screw's holding it in and all. Uh, so let's go over here and we'll take a look inside. Or actually, first, let's take a look up underneath. Ah, uh, let me crawl down here, mold. Mold and full of mold. Okay, so here's the bottom of the torque box where it comes from the subframe over to the rocker panel. Uh, I have another piece and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but if you look closely, there is a inner torque box. Okay. So let's go up here. All right, sorry guys, I'm rolling around on the floor. Oh, big fat dude rolling around on the floor. All right, so that, what you're looking at right now, is actually the floor pan. That is not the torque box torque box sits underneath this so I have made both of these pieces here if I can get it this one out because of course when I'm trying to get it out to show somebody something they don't want to work all right there it goes all right so let me get this out of the way all right so here's the inner torque box uh, because this is double thick steel so I got a piece of 14 gauge up underneath there and that's going to go down to where we showed you the outer torque box and then this piece right here goes down to fill that gap now one of the things i have to keep in mind is is that my emergency brake cable goes through this channel up, up in here okay goes through this pan and out this so I still got to deal with that. I'm waiting for a new emergency brake cable to come in because the cable was trash, as you can might imagine. And it's a whole lot easier for me to put this in here before I weld everything up. But this was made with two different pieces and welded together. Uh, I didn't dress the backside because there's no need to it. But 
if you look right here, you see this angle? This started out as one flat piece of steel, but because I needed to bend this corner into it, that gave me this crazy angle and that's why it's got a crazy cut. Uh, so then, I made the floor pan to go on top of that and it fits really nice and tight up against it. And this again was made in two pieces because of the same issue with once I fold it, it bends that out of, out of shape. And I have to say my fit is like very nice. I have not welded the back side of this yet. Uh, the reason why is because I got started on what I was doing over there and kind of messed up my hammer stand. Also, I have a, for my hammer stand, I have a piece of 18 gauge copper coming to clad the top of it so that when I lay this on top, I'm not welding to the stand. Uh, I welded this using that stand so I could clamp everybody down and, and that that big chunk of steel that's on there, that half inch thick piece of steel, is sucking up a lot of the heat. So, yeah, I'm happy with the way that this pan came out. Uh, as you can see, fits right on top, real nice, nice and snug. So, that takes care of the driver's uh, floor pan and torque box setup. Uh, again, like I said, nothing's welded in yet, but I'm working on it. So, let's go over here to the passenger side because that's where it gets interesting. Well, I don't know, they're both interesting, but this one, this one definitely Bobby Brown was around because we had to do some hammer timing. So this, this side has these two ribs in it. And again, that's 14 gauge steel. And that's pretty thick. So bead roller is not gonna roll that out. But, we're just going to have to do some hammer forming, and what I decided that was the best way to get that done was to take that hammer stand that I got and take a couple pieces of that steel and weld it to the top of it. And I literally just... Oops. Wait a minute. Let me look and see what I'm doing. Literally just sandwiched it on there and... beat the crap out of it with this really cool chisel and I got that from when I got that uh, sewing machine that's over there the leather pants and ja uh, vest and the box of files and stuff like that and that phone at that church sale and that allowed me to hammer in there now I will say this I did slam the crap out of my thumb on yeah you can see right there yeah that wasn't fun but i got it hammered out the next thing that has to happen is i've got to take a piece of 18 gauge because again that's a torque box not a floor pan and i'll get a piece of 18 gauge and i'll go over there to the hammer deal eo eo and and the 18 gauge will go a lot easier and i'll probably be able to use my air hammer uh, i tried this with my air hammer and it, it laughed it didn't want to touch it uh, it was literally a uh, three pound sledgehammer and that chisel and I was able to get it to sink in there. But I'm going to take another piece of 18, lay that on top and put my same uh, beads in it because it needs to fit right on top of there and then we'll start building the floor out over on this side. And uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's what's been going on. It's just been hammer, hammer, hammer down, hammer down, hammer down. Uh, on this hammer stand, everything I see, you see right there, the wheel I got free, my bum when he moved out, he left that here. Uh, the plate steel I already had out back. I had this piece, man, I've had this piece of steel right here for a good 11, 12, 13 years or so. Uh, didn't cost me anything to make this, and I'm telling you right now, that is a nice tool. Uh, this slides off the top, I can make whatever I need. Next thing I think I'm gonna do is get a vise for it and uh, probably a throatless shear. Uh, this thing, that, that, that wheel does not move. I beat the crap out of it with that hammer right there and it don't move at all. So anyway guys, that's what I've been doing over there. 
I just got the oil pan for uh, for uh, Johnny, and I'll probably start jerking with that because that's the last thing I need to do on Johnny is get the oil pan fitted and make sure everybody's in 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 their happy place and run my uh my cooler lines as well. I'm gonna get that taken care of, and then we're gonna knock this out and get it out of the way and get the next one in. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got for you today. I have literally just been hammered and hammered and hammered down on this. Uh, really proud of that floor pan over there. That came out looking real nice. Uh, everything should go together just nice over here. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got for you today. I will probably see y'all later this week or beginning of next week or some other time. But uh, right now, I'm about tired of hammering down on this one and need to go do something else to get my head straight. Well, y'all keep rocking and a rolling and a rolling and a rocking. And me and Bobby Brown got to do some more hammer time. Hammer time. Don't, 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 don't.